So here we have our NVH capture from the vehicle with the differential wine and uh, I think we can agree there is a lot to take on here. First thing is to go to options and look at uh, advanced options, go to features and make sure that enable advanced features is selected. Next let's have a look at our vehicle setup. We went for uh, multiple sensor mode and four sensors noticed how channel A and B were configured for the passenger compartment because that was inside the vehicle and labelled up correctly here and C and D for engine compartments so um, outside the vehicle again labelled up correctly in particular channel D was an accelerometer set as a microphone so although every sensor was a microphone this in fact was an accelerometer which enables us to listen to structure borne noise. Vehicle information, this is important for your tyre sizes, differential ratio and of course more importantly this section here, the advanced. So that was um, making sure we have the correct transmission ratios for this vehicle where the uh, wiki, uh, Wikipedia was uh, excellent in providing that data. Click apply and then record it otherwise. Now I'm just going to play back some of the audio here so please be careful this will be quite loud so I do apologise in advance. Basically what we had there was pretty much wind noise. Um, if you were listening on headphones um, you may have heard a whine. I would recommend over the ear headphones with uh, noise cancelling. Uh, there was a whine evident and that was pretty much picked up by the accelerometer but um, we'll go through all the steps as we described in the forum post and um, yeah, hopefully reveal how we can use MBH um, and all the features within to assist with diagnosis of such um, low cabin noises that are difficult to hear sometimes even with the human ear but also then when it comes to using MBH Okay, so step one was to move the frequency um, to something a little bit more sensible. Um, we went for two kilohertz, so just click on the uh, frequency axis here and we'll drag that out to the right to a maximum of about two kilohertz. And how do we know two kilohertz was a sensible frequency range? Well, really we don't at this stage, so what we wanted to do was generate um, a 2 kilohertz frequency and see if that was a sort of higher pitch than what we got inside the cabin. So first of all we'll use the right click feature we're going to hide channels um, C and D because they are not relevant we want to listen to the cabin microphones. Uh, right click again or to scale and also click on this axis uh, amplitude there just to see give us a little bit more resolution. Um, before we do go to 2 kilohertz, um, this is a little bit overkill in the amount of vibration orders we've got displayed there. Um, I don't think we're interested in the combustion order for the engine so we'll take that away but E1 is useful because that's our engine speed. We're not interested in any of the front tyre orders. The reason we've got front and rear tyre orders is because they're different sized tyres although it doesn't really make too much of a difference because ultimately their circumference is roughly the same. Uh, we'll keep rear tyre and we'll take away uh, the second order of the prop shaft so that just tidies that up a little bit. Sorry I've just uh, explained what's going on there. Sometimes when you click or when you do click here in the um, frequency view and drag you end up with your harmonic rulers so sometimes you'll see those appear when you click and drag. Just pull them, drag them to the left and they'll disappear. Okay so we want to use the function generator. Uh, we go to options, function generator, and you must have your scope connected to use this feature. We're going to go for 2000 hertz, a sine wave, and uh, please be careful because this will now play a high frequency pitch. Um, so let's remove the mute here. And I can safely say that our differential wind is not that high a pitch, most certainly. So I know that the wind that I'm looking for is somewhere here 
within this 0 to 2 kilohertz. So step 2 was auto scale which we'd already done so let's just right click auto scale uh, again remember you can click here and get better resolution um, if I wanted to I could overrange it there but for now we'll keep it sort of within the view so we need to locate the area where we were having this uh, whining noise and you'll notice in my road speed that we are well let me just track it with this marker click on the marker here in the signal history 64 accelerating up to 68 dropping down again 64 going up to 68 because it was within these periods of acceleration where I could hear the whine so I'm going to just press the play button and just monitor or have a look in the spectrum you may not hear the whine it's very difficult to hear the whine even on the headphones but just monitor the spectrum for something that pops up out of the noise floor do that again and focus around 600 Hertz there something's popped up there and then dropped away again and that's a value try it on another event here it's a value because it's popping up when we can hear the noise so we're correlating the 64 to 68 mile an hour increase of light acceleration to an event that's popping up in the spectrum. Same again there as well. We'll leave this running notice how you can't hear the whine now if you listen hard and I think I've got to be careful here that I'm not um, whether the placebo effect is having some kind of um, influence on my opinion but I find it very hard to hear that whine even on noise cancelling headphones maybe some of you can but uh, be interesting to get your feedback on that one so let's come back and step through using the step forward feature of MBH so I've put our marker back to 64 and we'll step forward one frame at a time until we see that peak occur around the 600 Hertz marker there it is this event here that's creeping up we can go until we get in fact it's very well pronounced there now in fact stepping forward does help yeah let's just go back one there we are bring that marker down so it's certainly above this sort of noise floor this sort of higher frequency noise floor and of value because it occurs when our fault occurs now step four asks us to use the zoom feature so we can highlight this area and just focus on this 600 hertz area of interest suspect so just click at out that marker there we can keep that in position and what intrigued me with this was just how we have such a difference between two microphones so this was the microphone that was facing the drop plus this is the microphone that's facing inside the cabin and yet this one picks it up uh, considerably better to quite a, um, a, a difference in uh, 
peak sound level. Remember, um, three decibel is the um, minimum amount of uh, increase in sound level that is perceived by humans, and uh, 10 decibel is considered to be a doubling of the sound of the volume. So when we get to 8.6 decibel here, that is quite considerable indeed. So the microphone pointing to the offside drop glass is picking up this uh, suspect wine that we have uh, far clearly than the microphone in the cabin. So if we'd got a microphone hanging up on the rear view mirror, we would have actually struggled to capture this alone. Okay, so step five then was to use the function generator again and just see if this 600 hertz could be similar to the sound that we can hear in the cabin and we go options function generator again remember that we need to have the mic uh, sorry the picoscope connected to use the function generator typing 609 and be careful once again here because when I uh, unmute this will then play a 609 fixed frequency sine wave <coughs> Now as the driver complainer of this vehicle, I think it's a little bit more sterile, but it's not far off the differential whine that I can hear, it's similar. So that kind of helps me pinpoint this 609 to potentially the noise I can hear in the cabin. It, it looks like that it's relevant, relevant for two reasons. One, it's similar sounding to that level, that frequency, and this peak occurs at the exact point when I'm lightly accelerating between 65 and 70 miles an hour. So I think we're on to something. Step six then was to use our filtering feature. So I'm just going to remove these rulers. We go to options, advanced options and filter and we want to do a band pass. So we'll go for um, band pass of I think the low frequency was 400 Hertz and the high frequency was 800 Hertz and click OK and we've got to drag the spectrum back out because when you activate filtering it resets the frequency uh, 1.8 don't we want that that's close enough uh, we'll use another right click feature, right click, channel in view, we're only interested now in channel B because that's the cabin mic that has picked up the offending frequency, there it is, we just confirm that is around about 609, yes it is, give or take, and we'll press play now and see if we can hear it as we accelerate between 64 and 68 miles an hour. I'll do that again. Okay. So it's become very insular in its sound, in its reproduction. Uh, we've taken away all the low frequency noise, or considerable amount, and a lot of high frequency noise. It hasn't really helped. Um, there doesn't seem to be sufficient energy in that noise to be heard above this noise floor, which has surprised me. Nevertheless, by using filtering, be aware that some of the components in this low frequency and high frequency contribute to this frequency here. So the actual pitch, um, its true sound, its warmth, its depth, it's all contributed by high and lower frequencies. So whilst it's enabled us to visually see that peak, I don't believe it's helped us too much there in terms of um, helping us to hear the audio um, through the headphones but it's a feature that you've got at your disposal should this have had higher energy level. Now step seven then was to add more sensors. So first of all, options. 
back to filter and no filtering. Notice that the spectrum has gone back to 20 kilohertz, which is the maximum frequency with it we can hear as humans, and that depends on your age, lifestyle, etc. Right click will bring back um, all the microphones now, and we'll auto scale them. And what we'll do is we'll hide channel sorry we'll hide channel D and we'll have a listen to just channel C in fact because I think it's a worthy exercise this is the microphone that is pointed at the rear differential so it's in the airflow underneath the vehicle at 70 miles an hour. It's only going to sound awful, but um, just be aware, I'm going to press play now, that this will be quite loud. Yeah, um, I think we can agree, no diagnostic value in that. And what I found interesting was around about 609 hertz where we know our offending frequency is give or take there shall we say and we'll step backwards and forwards through acceleration and deceleration it doesn't pick up the offending frequency so be aware of using mics in such environments this was of no diagnostic value unfortunately What we'll do now then is bring back channel D and I think this speaks volumes already doesn't it uh, we'll hide channel C so this is now an accelerometer attached to the rear differential and it has a standout frequency there 610 Hertz and what we'll do we'll play it from around about 64 64 miles per hour sorry here we go and I think that speaks for itself again but be careful here that um, placing uh, accelerometer onto a differential you will hear every noise in there it's the same as applying a stethoscope to a transmission these are noises that um, are inherent within the transmission not necessarily a problem but all the same the concern here with this particular one is that we can hear it in the cabin as well so I'm just going to bring back uh, microphone B and what we find here of uh, diagnostic value is this peak that we see or captured originally with the microphone aimed at the right hand front drop glass has captured the same frequency as the contact microphone so we know that this offending peak here is from the differential uh, and we believe to be that tooth contact frequency of the ring gear uh, is also detected by the microphone so yeah we're onto something and um, how do we now proceed well um, I guess we could look at the oil contamination uh, make sure the correct oil uh, viscosity of oil for the differential is installed but uh, ultimately I think if this starts to get worse then it's going to be uh, differential work as a final check I thought this was a good exercise and that would be to simulate this um, 609 peak that we have if I just scroll through it's about here and um, match that to the function generator so if we go to options function generator and type in uh, 609 fixed frequency sine wave and see how the noises compare so just back up a bit which I've done here in the signal history we'll play the differential wine and then we'll introduce the function generator. Hopefully you 
felt like I did that certainly around the sweet spot 609 it wasn't far away in terms of pitch it won't be perfect remember because this is fixed frequency uh, and our offending frequency is made up of multiple frequencies but let's run that again so we've backed up here in the signal history to before the peak wine uh, and then at 609 Hertz <laughs> As soon as it goes past the 609 uh, we start to increase uh, the pitch of the differential wine is higher than that uh, uh, signal generator because we fixed at 609 here and it goes up I think we are now at uh, 631 oh, it's gone past that sweet spot uh, it does change in pitch but either way I hope that's of some help and um, yeah thank you for watching take care